Hello, and welcome back to Entering the Passion of Jesus. We continue the journey through Holy Week as we step inside the story of a teacher who turned the world upside down. We put ourselves in the picture so that we might take a closer look and let the ancient story open us up to deeper convictions for the call to follow the teacher, Jesus. Will you enter into the story? Let us enter into the story today. Enter, enter the story. Enter the place you belong. Not just looking on, for this is your story. Enter the story. to those who wanted to trap him, twist his words, and get him to say something damning. But he could not turn from his call, his vocation. He is not only a master teacher, but a prophet, a voice of the divine. It is his ability to draw the people to his teachings that pose a threat, a challenge to the authorities. So we place ourselves in the crowd today to be moved and motivated by Jesus, to get a faithful perspective. What would we have seen, heard, and felt if we were there? What do we do now? Let's enter into the passion. Prayer of Confession. We come here to encounter the teachings of Jesus. Many wanted to destroy him for these teachings, and sometimes we too find that his words challenge us, calling us to do more than we think we can be or do, oh God. But God, we ask you to forgive us. Let us be shaped into new people made in the mold of justice, not the stamp of Caesar's coin. You entered our story through Jesus. Now help us to enter fully into the story of your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Enter, enter the story. Enter the place you belong, not just looking on, for this is your story. Enter the story. Enter. 
hear these words of assurance and pardon. Know this, there are people whose lives have been changed completely by this story of love and passion. Transformation is possible. So you indeed are forgiven and freed, encouraged and loved by a God who wants you to live fully. So let us enter into the passion of Christ and be at peace with Christ. The Pharisees conspired to trap Jesus. They did not know how to love Jesus. And they also did not know how to love people. The Pharisees sent their disciples along with the Herodians to Jesus. The Pharisees were anti-government and anti-Roman, while the Herodians were pro-government and pro-Roman. These people, who were usually opposed to each other, formed an alliance to attack Jesus. The Pharisees joined forces with the Herodians and sought the power of Rome, using their young disciples to attack Jesus. These were people who did not know how to love. Young Pharisees and Herodians went to see Jesus. They called Jesus teacher, but they were pretending. They told Jesus that he was a true teacher, not to praise him, but to pressure him to speak the truth that was in his heart. They said that Jesus taught the true way of God, putting pressure on him to speak the truth. They said that Jesus did not show favoritism to anyone, or putting pressure on him to speak the truth without worrying about what other people thought. They asked Jesus whether it was right to pay taxes to Caesar. There was a trap in this question. The Pharisees and Zealots refused to pay taxes, while the Sadducees and Herodians supported the tax payment. If Jesus said that taxes should be paid, he would fall into the trap of the Pharisees and Zealots. If he said the taxes should not be paid, he would be seen as a political criminal by the Sadducees, Herodians, the Roman governor, and King Herod. The young Pharisees expected Jesus to refuse to pay taxes, and although they had the same position, they were setting a trap. It was a wicked plan. They pretended to love Jesus while deceiving him. Jesus knew their evil thoughts and called them hypocrites, saying that deceiving love was wickedness. He asked them to show him a denarius, and they gave him one with the image of Caesar and the inscrip uh, inscription, uh, Caesar TV, which is meaning Caesar is God. Jesus asked them whose image and inscription it was, and they replied that it belonged to Caesar. Jesus then said to give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to give to God what is God's. Jesus believed that God alone should rule in people's hearts. The Jews believed that God was the only God and the only King. The Herodians had coins in their pockets and were benefiting from the political and religious advantages given by Caesar. Jesus spoke about whose values are in their hearts, saying that if they are living for Caesar and his benefits, they should give him taxes. But if they are living for God, they should give themselves to God. It's not about taxes, but about whose values are in their hearts. It's about asking oneself, is God present in my values? Are my actions based on God's love? Those who live for Caesar and his benefits live by touching coins, while those who live for God and hope in him uh, give their hearts to God and live by confessing that being bound to God is a blessing. As a Christian, 
it is right to help and love people. However, Christians serve God, not people. If there are people who fall into the path of hypocrisy, like the Pharisees and Sadducees, we must restrain them. Men's how hypocrisy goes to men and God's love goes to God. Therefore, while loving people, the direction of that love must be toward God. This is the way to overcome the devil's temptation.